Hi, I'm Heinbach. Good to have you back. I'm joined today by my friend Adam Morford, who is a musician and instrument maker. And we've been making music together for a week now, but we made music before. We recorded an album that will be coming out on Gohan Tapes this autumn or early winter. We are sitting in front of this giant, <laughs> beautiful instrument. Can you tell us a bit more about you and your instruments? Absolutely. Uh, this right here is the Ultra Mega Marvin. And it is a four foot bell uh, with truck springs welded to the top of it and motorcycle springs. And then our regular Marvin springs. And all of these are garage door springs. So, pretty much the biggest springs. I could find was necessary for the Ultra Mega Marvin. I believe that to be Ultra Mega, mm -hmm. it must be humongous. This was the biggest piece that uh, I have made to date. We have many smaller ones and all sorts of different idiophones, uh, our gamelan strips and block bells and sleigh bells and all these different things for uh, percussionists and um, composers to use for sounds that maybe didn't exist before. I like to think of my work as filling in gaps of sounds that didn't exist in an instrument, mm -hmm. like package. Mm -hmm. More like, oh, you, that's like a giant, you know, steel door of an airplane hangar, mm -hmm. like closing, but it's like, how do you recreate that in the studio? told me that you like to create instruments that sound out of this world without effects. Yes, absolutely. Because um, you hear sounds in movies and you can, you might not be able to identify what they are originally because so much reverb processing has been um, added to it. And I got the idea, like, how could you make something so big and insane without any effects? So that's where lots of springs come in. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come up with the name, Marvin? When my grandfather turned 90, um, he gave me his welder, which is, if you can see in the back over there. Um, I really didn't have any idea of what I wanted to do with it. I was just really excited to have the ability to fuse metal. And after months of making silly things that are already on the market, just kind of as tests, I decided to make something 
that didn't exist, basically inspired by my grandfather because he gave me the opportunity to have a welder. And once I made it, the name just clicked in my head of, I'm going to call it the Marvin and name it after him. The business became like official in 2016. There was never any intention to make anything for anyone else. I just, I wanted to make something that would potentially get me okay. a gig. Like, hey, there's the guy with the spaceship. Uh -huh. We should have him mm -hmm. play. But I posted some stuff online to show my mom, mm -hmm. and then it kind of just, everything changed. The beginning of any Marvin starts out as a couple of sheet metal triangles. And then they are hammered into shape. And once they are hammered into shape, then the bell is welded. Lots and lots of hammering. As you can see on the biggest one, this took us maybe a week or so to hammer. I was trying to figure out what sort of springs were bigger and, and where I would find them. So this was before we had the knowledge of the spring company that we now work with. So I was out digging through junkyards. How do you go about tuning and choosing the springs? I just kind of do it by eye. Mm -hmm. um, and I give them enough of a length difference um, so that I know that the pitches will be different. There is no like specific pitch to any of these. They're just, uh, they're just like certain, I guess, note values apart. To me, that's the beauty is that someone can fall in love with a specific one and someone could like the one right next to it. Each one is different, just like we're all different. So mm -hmm. it, it, to me, that sort of thing made sense. So would it be possible to have one say, I want this to be tuned to the root of G or something? Is that something you would do? I would have to think about that. But for the most part, I like, I like making them so that every time at the end when one's created, I'm surprised. And there's already, in my opinion, there's already enough instruments that can be tuned to every single note and every single specific pitch that you want. Might as well start making ones that are in between, you know, like the microtones and, and stuff like that. So that's kind of another inspiration of art sound, if you will. <laughs> influenced by instrument builders when you talk about microtonal music for example? I didn't really know of any experimental instrument builders at all until after I built this and then people were like you're an experimental instrument builder and I was like oh thank you <laughs> I'm surprised by that but um, then I started to discover uh, people like Harry Parch Frank Zapp was a huge influence on me because of all of the sounds that were in his records that weren't instruments. He played a bicycle on a TV show and that was like fascinating to me. Um, just things that could still make musical sounds and notes so to speak, but weren't of the normal realm of what you would think, a violin, a cello, a drum, you know, a saxophone, stuff like that, a piano. So, try and, uh, try and push the envelope a little bit. So how did you come about with the idea of the bow area? 
because that I mean yeah. I can see that this shape which is sort of like a cowbell from hell right yeah yeah uh, that seems intuitive but this side bow that seems yeah. completely yeah. new to me I was working a lot with violin bows and just bowing like everything in sight from marimbas to pieces of metal and cymbals and whatever and I really liked the frequencies that I was getting so I thought to myself okay you're gonna make an instrument that doesn't exist and it's gonna be different than anything anyone's ever seen I wanted to be able to mix you know like the highs from the bowing with the lows of the springs and the bell I thought that would be a really neat thing so I just kinda of sat there and was looking at it for a while and then I kinda of got like this sail you know like on like a pirate ship the uh, vibe kind of popped into my head I didn't know if it was really gonna work because I had never I had never bowed this material before it was just the closest thing that looked like a string Just about every instrument I've ever owned, you kind of get to a point where you're like, okay, that's the use for this. And, you know, maybe it goes up on the shelf and you use it for your specific purposes, especially percussion instruments for me. Um, uh, but this instrument, even four years after it's done, I still see people play it and myself play it and it's like a whole new fresh experience every time. We will set this on top of the big one for size purposes. But this right here is the very first one that I built. This is the original Marvin. Um, all of our pieces now, um, like all of the regular Marvins now, come with a triple bow bar which is like um, which is like this but this was the original one and you can kind of see where that you know the sail you know this one really has that uh, that that pirate ship kind of like space pirate ship <laughs> this one is for sale on our website if you order one it's a couple weeks and you'll have your own crazy universe There's a lot more people that fly around and travel and that wanted to include these sounds. So that is where the micro and mini Marvin came in. This is our mini Marvin, which, you know, mount to any sort of like percussion, traditional cowbell stand. It's got two springs in the mouth, uh, four on top, two on the bow bar, and with an EKG contact mic that we sell, which is a magnetic contact mic inside of a wood casing, super durable, quarter inch jack. This thing packs such a punch. And then we have our Micro Marvin, which is our smallest, probably our best selling one because people have begun to realize that with a few effects pedals and the contact mic, you can turn this into this.
yeah, who knows what sort of Marvins will come out of the future, but that's, that's, what, we, uh, that's what we have now. Micro, Mini, and the regular Marvin are the ones that we sell. The Mega and the Ultra Mega, as you can see by me standing by this, is it's almost up to my nose. Um, this is like larger than a Hammond B3 and like a Leslie, so it's not really the type of thing you can ship. <laughs> That's it for this video. Thank you very much Adam for showing us the Marins and inviting me to come over. This has been an uh, enormous pleasure for me and I've enjoyed the time here greatly. And for me too. Yeah. Thank you so much for Thank traveling you. all this way to make wonderful sounds. Yeah, and yeah, you can get our new album soon hopefully and after that we've probably got another one since we recorded enough material. <laughs> I'm going to be putting up some of the sounds from this beautiful ultra mega Marvin. Uh, on the Patreon and some of the music too. So, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments or the subreddit. See you in the next one. Bye!